How's it going everyone? This is MindBlank. Welcome back to my channel where I did not take my own advice regarding buying a reference a Radeon RX 480. But a lot of that has changed since that video's release and I just got tired of waiting for stocks on the few custom cards that have been released and seeing other manufacturers list dates, release dates in the second half of August or late August got me even mad. I decided to buy a Sapphire reference Radeon RX 480 and make my own custom card. It just so happens that this one is a water-cooled AIO beast of an RX 480 overclocked to 1470 MHz. So I got a reference Sapphire RX 480, I got this and I made this. Whoa, 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 not so fast you might be thinking. First of all, this will be a two-part video, I tried to fit everything in one part, but there's just too many things that uh, I want to talk about, show you guys, and I think your curiosity is probably very big as well. Therefore, expect part two of this video showing how I actually made the card, cooling details, the overclocking process, and wrapping up this custom-built RX480 comprehensive review. First things first, the point of this idea was not to slap cooling solutions that are more than a third of what the card is worth, that would just be silly, but consider this as I still gaze in awe upon the luck I had when sourcing these two items, the card and the cooling solution. Initially I wanted to get an RT Cooling Accelero Mono Plus which can handle the card just fine and probably get me where I am with good results. I started searching and I found first of all stocks and a sale on the Sapphire card around 7% off Cool, I said to myself, then off to find a third party cooling solution and that's when I stumbled upon this beast of an AIO. This had a massive sale and I dropped on it like flies on, well, you know on what. All in all, this was around 8% cheaper than getting a custom Sapphire Nitro Power Color Devil, which are not in stock, anywhere, for the moment. It also turned out 10% cheaper than the Gigabyte GTX 1060 G1 Gaming. One thing I'd like to clarify about how things work with the Radeon RX 480 reference or otherwise, by default it runs at a spec 1266MHz boost clock which it can sustain only if the power is below the max threshold and temperatures are within comfortable range. The standard BIOS set of 89 Celsius is not comfortable, at least according to the card itself and although this definitely can't be considered throttling, it rarely, rarely ever stays at 1266 MHz, never mind a locked 1266 like it should. You can change this instantly with your card by upping the power target and setting the fan speed on manual or curve and just ensure that it is below 80 Celsius at all times during load. Doing this is just slider work and nets you a locked 1266MHz, considering that with stock settings in some games it can go as low as 1150MHz average, you can imagine this is a nice noticeable boost in performance. But anyway, no one slaps this kind of cooler on their card if not to overclock, and in this segment I am very happy with what I was able to obtain, 1470MHz with 1.256V GPU core voltage, I can even get to 1517MHz, yes you heard that right, but with 1.327V which is a little more than I am comfortable with for 24-7. You can stop sweating for those benchmarks, they are coming right after this. I tested out of the box with the boost clocks it is able to sustain by default, then again with the locked 1266MHz obtained how I explained earlier, and last with the 1470MHz overclocked and the mounted AIO. I tested against the GTX 1060 G1 Gaming which I also overclocked to 2107MHz, the highest it would go without huge voltage bumps. Also against the MSI GTX 970 Gaming X which is clocked by factory at 1342MHz and the Gigabyte Windforce GTX 980 clocked at 1330MHz, so let's see those numbers. Let's start off with synthetics, a fire strike is first and out of the box the RX 480 is around 1124 MHz which is one of the lowest clocks in my tests. Set the sliders right and you get a free bump from 12200 to 1300 300. 1470 MHz GPU clock puts it as the fastest card in this lineup. TimeSpy is the latest synthetic DX12 benchmark, it makes use of async shaders so AMD should be able to flex its muscles here, it already does at default with a measly clock of 1161MHz, the 1470OC puts it again as the leader of this pack by quite an impressive margin. 
Last of the Synthetics is Unigen Heaven, very heavy on tessellation, I chose it as AMD has stepped up its tessellation performance by quite a lot with Polaris. It is on par with Maxwell, however Pascal is ahead here by a bit. I tested on screen without tessellation and things are evening out between the RX 480 and the 1060. Good old Crisis 3 still has some kick left in it, for sure, very CPU and GPU demanding. The RX 480 only manages an 1137 MHz clock here on default, but overclocked it beats the GTXs. The overclocked 980 is the strongest, but in average frame rates the RX 480 has it beat as well. Look at the massive performance difference between out of the box and overclocked, it is 21% faster, it's like a whole new graphics card. Doom is a very pretty game, very nicely optimized and in my opinion the best Vulcan implementation at the moment. I'm first testing on OpenGL and things look good here, even with default setup for RX 480. Of course other cards are faster but switch to Vulcan and the situation is reversed. The RX 480 even at default is as fast as the overclock 1060 and 980 beating them both. At 1470MHz it takes a huge lead with a whopping 163 average frames. Rise of the Tomb Raider is both a DX11 and DX12 game, not the best DX12 implementation but it is something to test and it does look fabulous. First up is DX11 and the RX480 is a good show even at stock with an only 1168MHz average clock. Overclock it to 1470MHz, it once again takes the lead even past the massively OC GTX 1060. Switching to DX12 I was expecting lower performance but was not expecting a much faster GTX 980. The RX 480 uh, is as fast as the GTX 1060 but the 980 takes the cake here. And of course it's GTA 5 which is pretty vendor neutral this time around. The RX 480 out of the box manages one of its highest clocks here, 1215MHz. Nonetheless upping this to 1470MHz makes it the second fastest in the test after the OC GTX 1060. GTA 5 seems to lend itself quite nicely to the Pascal architecture as I've seen nice improvements even when I tested Maxwell vs Pascal clock for clock. In any case this is another situation of 20% extra performance from overclocking which is is just amazing. Beautiful Witcher 3 is tested here without hairworks and with SSAO instead of HBAO Plus to keep things equal. 1165MHz out of the box default clock, a nice boost for locking the clocks to 1266, not bad for just moving some sliders, but overclocking it to 1470MHz puts it as the leader here by a definite margin, even overclocked to 2107MHz the GTX 1060 is behind the RX 480 as long as there are no hairworks enabled. Quite an awesome showing here in Witcher 3. The last game I tested is Far Cry Primal. Not the prettiest of the bunch but does look good it has to be said. Also it is taxing on the GPU and has the built-in benchmark which is quite good. The default RX 480 is clocking in at 1172MHz average and is slightly behind the overclock GTX 970. Free 3 FPS by locking to 1266MHz and at 1470MHz overclock it is yet again the fastest of the bunch beating the GTX 1060 at 2107MHz by 1 FPS. And there you have it everyone, I don't think I got lucky with the card, I think the RX 480 is generally with proper cooling a decent clocker. Also I just debunked myths about it not scaling well with frequency, overclocked it proved to be an extremely powerful competitor here, it actually was faster than all cards most of the time. In upcoming DX12 and Vulcan titles, if it shows better performance compared to the 1060, it is even more so, in my opinion, the card to pick up. The process of building this thing was actually very pleasant and I am happy with how it turned out. It looks absolutely outstanding in my opinion of course and is a huge step compared to the stock blower. Quieter, cooler, in a 25C ambient it is never above 48 Celsius even at 1500 plus megahertz. The cooler also has some type of lighting on the pump unit they call it Comet. It is white lights with a red circling tail that looks actually pretty cool and matched the theme here perfectly. The footage here doesn't do it justice as it looks much better in person. And there you have it everyone, this is the end of part 1, stay tuned for part 2 where I will be showing how I build a card and also I will be showing you how to make your own custom RX 480. Also there will be further discussion of the overclocking capabilities of this card. Thank you for watching, like this video, comment and subscribe for more awesome, awesome content from my channel. See you next time everybody, bye bye.